In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. From Muhammad, the messenger of God, to Heraclius, the emperor of Byzantium, greetings to him who is the follower of righteous guidance. I bid you to hear the divine call. I am the messenger of God to the people. Accept Islam for your salvation. He speaks of a new prophet in Arabia. Was it like this when John the Baptist came to King Herod, out of the desert, crying about salvation? Macorcus, Patriarch of Alexandria. Kizra, Emperor of Persia, Mohammed calls to you with the call of God. Accept Islam for your salvation. Embrace Islam. You come out of the desert. Smelling of camel and goat to tell Persia where he shall kneel. Muhammad, messenger of God. Who gave him this authority? God sent Muhammad as a mercy to mankind. Six hundred years after Christ died, when Europe was sunk in the Dark Ages and everywhere the old civilizations were falling, Muhammad was born in Mecca in Arabia. Mecca was then a rich trading city ruled by its merchants, whose wealth was multiplied by a unique privilege. They housed the gods. Every year, at the time of the Great Fair, the desert priests brought their idols and the images of their gods into the custody of the Kaaba. Once the most holy shrine of Abraham, the Kaaba had now become a house of idolatry, boasting no fewer than 360 different gods. Mecca in 610 AD. Thank <laughs> you. 
Have you had the day's calendar, my young? Not yet. But this year the gods are gold. And when you put the gods and prophet together, you said very pretty between. Mm. <laughs> and more gods to place in the Kaaba. Caravan from Syria. Hmm. They must have been running. They'll be thirsty. Put five more men on the North Wells. How many sheep shall I have to kill for them? Seventy? Give them a hundred. Mecca must keep her name for hospitality. And ten lambs for the leaders. <laughs> Bread and water do the poets have in Hakim's house, where verse and prose are nightly put to slaughter. <laughs> I swear, in there is thinner than the water. <laughs> oh, open a space, open a space, you lovers of poetry, to Bu Sufyan, willing and uh, rich, patron of the arts. When Bu Sufyan invites the poet in, there joy is kith and love is kin. Where wines and cakes abound, the skills of verse are found. All revels and all songs begin when Busafian invites the poet in. From the silkworms of China, my lady. Pleasure to the limbs, and as my lady can see, a ravish to the eye. Yes, seven lengths. Twenty dinar. Abu Sofyan's wife. Fifteen. Gods of the Kaaba have their needs, their upkeeps. Who is that man who stood there? Who looked into my soul? Carry me away from here. Why must Mohammed come down here? Why don't you stop him? He's your nephew. Maybe he'll change. Change? He's 40 years old. It's unnatural. With a rich wife, he could afford the best of Mecca. Yet he chooses to sit shivering in a cave. It is unnatural. For a man who dares to risk the anger of Aluzar, who keeps our health, Manat, the god of our prosperity, our loved, the god of our family and tribes, and Hubal, Hubal, who starts our caravans and predicts our fate. To challenge the gods within earshot of the gods is dangerous. Unreasonable. Rebellious. Blasphemous. Yes. I'm afraid Muhammad will harm himself. sad when the great fair is over. I might not see the next one. Abu Talib! Abu Talib! Catch your breath, Zaid. Has Mohammed come down from Adhira yet? He's been up there three days. No. No, we haven't seen him. Khadija hoped he might have come to you on his way home. And he's still up there. 
Three days. I'm afraid for him on the mountain, because I don't know what it means. Men see the world too well from a mountain. man from a sensitive drop of blood, who teaches man what he knows not, read. Still trembling under the blanket. But he has spoken. Zaid, what happened to my nephew on the mountain? He was alone in the cave. Suddenly, an angel came into him. The angel said, Read. Mohammed replied, I cannot read. The angel commanded again, Read in the name of thy Lord, who created man from a sensitive drop of blood, who teaches man what he knows not. Read. Who knows if it was Gabriel? It could have been a dream. When Muhammad was coming from the mountain, he saw Gabriel plainly in the shape of a man standing on the horizon. Wherever he looked, upon every turn of his head he saw him. And Gabriel said to him again, I am Gabriel. And you, Muhammad, are the messenger of God. Who has he told about this? His wife. And Ali. And his friend Abu Bakr. And you. I am his adopted son. Be careful to whom you talk. Tell him his uncle who protected him when he was a child will protect him still. After all. They say the God of Moses spoke to him out of a burning bush. If you do not restrain your nephew, then we will. He's dividing the city, hut against house. He's dividing the generations, child against parent. The young are listening to him. He attracts the young. We are Arabs. We obey our fathers. Our children cannot be our teachers. How can we accept that a man we met in the street yesterday can be some God's prophet today? Dead bones can live again, he says, because he who created man can also make man return from the dead, he says. <laughs> the gods might leave us and give their benefits to another city. Tell him we will give him authority Position, the keys to the Kaaba, and money, what money he wants. 
Tell him we will give him anything he wants. Mohammed, spare yourself and me. Do not put a greater burden on an old man than he can bear. In your childhood, you were in my arms. I cannot now see you hurt. If you refuse them, they will hurt you. He said this to me. Were they to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I would not renounce my message, which is from God. When I am dead, you may do as you please. But whilst I'm alive, you'll obey your father. Why do you hurt our father? If I were drunk every day and played dice every night, You'd call it high spirits. You will be more my brother than you are now. You are all my children. I've given you everything I could. But it seems not to be enough. Mohammed gives me more. He'll give all the world more. Get him out of here, father. It's not Walid or me. It's our father. You torture him. Wait, Hudaifa! Wait! How can they say it's an invention, Mossab, when it isn't new? In Mecca, it's new. Yet God has said it all before. To Noah, Moses, Jesus, to all the prophets. But people changed it, turned it, forgot it. Now God says it to Muhammad again. And it is new again. Where is it? It's Jaffa. What have you brought with you? The very word of God. When the sun is overthrown, when the stars fall, when the mountains vanish, when the camels, big with young, are abandoned, when the wild beasts are herded together, when the seas rise, when the souls are sorted, when the female infant who is buried alive asks for what crime she was killed, when the books are opened, when the sky is torn away, then every soul will know what it has done. Were you there, Jaffa, when God gave him these words? Dawn is coming up. Amma? You first, then you, Jaffa.
Emma. You kept your mother awake all night with worry. I'm sorry, Father. Where were you? Have you been with Mohammed again? What will happen now? Forgive him. It was my fault. I did it. That God has helped us all our lives. But it fell. It could not even help itself. What talk have you been listening to? The real God is unseen. He's not made of clay. Amar, we see the gods in the Kaaba every day. I'm afraid for you. You're listening to people who will hurt you. I'm listening to Muhammad, mother. Muhammad is generous, yes. He gives, he shares. He'll pass no man without a smile. But he is spreading dangerous ideas. Dangerous ideas? That no man should starve? That the rich should not defraud the poor? That the strong should not oppress the weak? Are these dangerous ideas? Girls should not be forced into marriage, but be able to choose or refuse. Why, only tonight, he said, stop the burial of newborn girls. I was fortunate, always fortunate with your mother. Yes. But you know that you and I nearly never met, Yassar. And you were nearly never born. I was to be buried, like my two sisters. But my father couldn't do it. He couldn't do it a third time. When the second girl was being... When my father was putting sand over her, she took hold of his finger the way a baby does. He told my mother afterwards that it was a minute before the tender little grip eased and he dared take away his hand. When I was born, my father ran out of the house screaming that he couldn't do it again, that he could never do it again. So, my, uh, it is the custom. It is wrong. The gods that let such things be are no gods. I promise to go to Muhammad's house, mother. We pray there. Yes. He's a good man. Yes. Yes, you go. Read? Muhammad can neither write nor read. Nobody can speak. What did you say? He can speak? Well, so can you. So now you speak up, young man. What does Muhammad say, hmm? They are God's words, not his. Which gods? <laughs> what words? A speaking god? <laughs> <laughs> Your Muhammad speaks only to himself. When God reveals his message to Muhammad, he remembers every word. Then he tells it to those who can write. This is the Koran. Muhammad has starved himself into dreams. He hides under a blanket with his eyes shut. His eyes are shut, but his heart is open. You! Kick him for his cleverness. There is no purpose in that. Doesn't Muhammad realize we live by giving housing to the gods? We own the Kaaba. Every year the tribes of Arabia come here to Mecca to pray and to buy from us. Now were we to replace 300 gods with just one? 
whom we cannot even see, who is supposed to be in Taif and Medina, here in my house, in Jerusalem, on the moon? <laughs> Where would Mecca be then? The gods are both our worship and our revenue. You cannot buy and sell God. Young man, you are close to the whip. Amal, be sensible, boy. I have a question. Muhammad teaches you a slave is equal to his master. <laughs> is Black Bilal, who I paid money for, equal to me? Yes. Muhammad says, before God, all men are as equal as the teeth of a comb. Oh. This is a very pleasant idea to slaves and beggars. It gives them pretensions. Bilal. Teach this man the difference between a lord, a maker, and a slave. Take that whip. Lash his face to teach his mouth a lesson. Whip him! Whip him! Cut him! Whip him! Obey them. They'll kill you. See what anarchy they bring. They've even infected our slaves. If you're human enough to have gods, remember, they are the gods of your owner. I bought your humanity, Bilal, when I bought you. You will be corrected. <laughs> Your master, or this one god of yours? One god. There's only one god. Bring the stones! One god. One, one god. Crush him! Break him! Have you finished with him? There's only one God. One. You could swear the slave was preaching. What? Lord Umaya! Abu Bakr will pay a hundred dinar for this slave. Wait now. It's against our social order to sell a slave during his correction. The offer is to Lord Umayya. Two hundred. If the price of slaves is raised, we shall have to bathe ourselves next year. <laughs> God. Take him. He's no use to me anymore. Kill him or take him, I'm finished with him. We are declaring ourselves. God has told his messenger to declare Islam to all men. Open the windows. Let the world hear. We are coming out of the darkness. Hear what? God and Muhammad is his messenger. We have come into light. Join us in the mind of power. God is most great. God is most great. God has no partner. We have come into light. Join us in the mind of the Kaaba. Oh, 
Muhammad and his rebellion called Islam are coming out to foul our gods and dethrone religion. Don't let them reach the Kaaba. Throw them back. Defend your God. <laughs> There is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. Protect the Prophet! Now's the time to break them. There are only 30 of them. No, we've done enough. More will only create sympathy for them. God, most gracious, most merciful. Say, O you who reject faith, I worship not what Keep you worship. Keep out of the Kaaba. Neither will you worship what I worship. Silence, your false prophet. Finish, Muhammad. Protect the prophet. Messenger of God, back to the corner. Are brave. He is the bravest man in the desert. When he meets unarmed men, Muhammad is, is a liar. Liar? But you don't let him speak. Where is the lie and where is the truth? When it hasn't been spoken yet. Muhammad is a fraud. Stand up. Hit me back if you dare. I am for my nephew's religion, and I say what he says. Whoever has the courage to fight, fight with me. Muhammad.
when I hunt the desert at night. I know God is not kept in the house. Who would have thought that Hamza, Hamza above all, with his wine drinking, lion hunting, will come to join Mohammed? The more we attack him, the more they seem to join him. Where does he find his words? I don't know him. How can an illiterate man go up on a mountain and come down three days later blazing with poetry? If it were just poetry, he says it's God. How do we fight someone whose strength we do not understand? Mohammed promises heaven, trees in the sky, so naturally he's found an audience. Then we must make that audience less eager to listen to him. We will begin with the weaker ones. Your turn. Stretch her! Who is your God? Answer me! Say it! Say Hubal is your God! Say it! There is only one God. And Mohammed is the messenger of God.
and mother are the first martyrs of his land. They are promised paradise. How much are you men prepared to suffer? The Prophet has said we must leave Mecca. If you stay, they will kill you, one by one. Mohammed says that in Abyssinia there is a Christian king. No man is wronged in his country. You must leave now, today. We found their tracks and followed them, but they just disappeared. <laughs> they were there, in the desert, under the vultures, and you let them escape you. Escape? They vanished! Muhammad has stayed, only the weakest have gone. Weak or strong, they'll blacken our name. We're honest merchants, we buy and sell in good faith. We cannot afford scandal. Abyssinia. Amara, you're a friend of Anajashi the king? Yes. Can you use that friendship? I think I can bring them back. Yes. 
Abyssinia. Rise up, Amr. There is nothing you may ask for that we will not give. Lion of Judah, I... I don't know where to begin. You have our friendship. Begin there. Certain runaway slaves have escaped from us into your kingdom. Slaves go back? As you do not would return our slaves to us. There are, however, some free men among them. Rebels. Rebels. If there is disturbance in that Arabia, why am I not informed? They are rebels in religion. At one time or another, all religions were rebellions. The bodies of slaves are of the world and within our disposal. But as Jesus Christ is our shepherd, the souls of men are his sheep. These are Arabs who have betrayed the religion of their fathers. They follow a lunatic they call a prophet. But I cannot put souls into chains without hearing them. Stiff necks will hang them. Do you not bow to yourselves before your prophet? Muhammad is a man. We kneel only to God. Where are Muhammad's miracles, Jafar? If he were a prophet, he'd light the sky with miracles. Indeed, this is true. God has given his prophets the sign of miracles that we may recognize them. The miracle of Muhammad is the Holy Quran. A book! A book! Written by an illiterate, attributed to God. I think the emperor has heard enough. I'm mindful of Pentecost, when God sent down tongues of fire upon the heads of Christ's apostles, so they could speak the many languages of the world that they knew not before. But do such miracles happen in our times? I've heard enough. You've made a poor case. When we suffered persecution in Mecca, Muhammad told us, go to Abyssinia, the land of a righteous king, where no man is wronged. What they call persecution was fair punishment. Their disorder and their... Why did your prophet send you to me? Because you believe in the book of the one God as we do. He sent us because in your heart God will protect us. Talking with them is like drawing water from a mirage. But they've now laid a duty on me to listen to them, my friend. Go on. For years, we worshipped wood and stone, images of our own manufacture. We lived in ignorance of God. We had few earthly laws and no heavenly laws. The rich neglect the poor and the natural pity of man, whereby he lifts his brother up when he has fallen, is described by them as upsetting social order. To this inhumanity, has come a man whom God chose. And in that we believe. You're overcome. I beg you to collect yourself. I speak of the messenger of God. Muhammad teaches us to worship one God, to speak truth, 
to love our neighbors as ourselves, to give charity. Even a smile can be charity. To protect women from misuse, to shelter orphans, and to turn away from gods of wood and stone. I cannot keep still and hear this blasphemy. We are an ancient civilization. To call our gods wood and stone is to speak ignorantly of them. The idol, the form, is not what we worship, but the spirit that resides within the form. I agree that idolatry is not always fully understood. Thank you. Now let me bring him back to the women. God made woman to be the proper companion of man. She is different, but equal. Equal! We buy them. Feed them, clothe them, use them, discard them. Women equal to us? <laughs> God created man from one male and one female. Ah, oh, you must respect in all women the womb that bore you. Why are your 300 gods so tongue-tied, while his only god is eloquent? God has spoken to us before, through Abraham, Noah, Moses, and through Jesus Christ. Why should we be so surprised that God speaks to us now through Muhammad? Who taught you those names? They are named in the Quran. I knew Muhammad when he was an orphan minding sheep. And we knew Christ as a carpenter. What Christ says, and what your Muhammad says, is like two rays from the same lamp. They are lying to you. They deny Christ. You worship three gods, they say. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they say. What do you say of Christ? They say God cannot have a son. Christ is not the Son of God. Speak to me of Christ. We say of Christ what our prophet has taught us that God cast his Holy Spirit into the womb of a virgin named Mary, and that she conceived Christ, the Apostle of God. The Apostle, he says, not the Son, not the Son. What does your miracle, your Quran, say of the birth of our dear Lord Jesus Christ? May I relate the words? Come closer to me. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Relate in the book the story of Mary, how she withdrew from her family to a place in the East, how we sent to her our angel Gabriel, who said, I am a messenger from your God to announce the birth of a holy son to you. She said, How shall I, Mary, have a son when no man has touched me? And Gabriel replied, For your Lord says, It will happen. We appoint him as a sign unto man, and a mercy from us. It is a thing ordained. difference between us and you is no thicker than this line. Not for a mountain of gold will I give them up to you. You may live in Abyssinia in peace for as long as you wish. May God's blessings be upon you on your return. Intolerable. Muhammad disturbs even our foreign alliances. Very well. We will make a foreigner of him. 
Abu Talib has his arms around him. Very well. We will throw uncle and nephew out. Well spoken. Well spoken. In one bundle, his whole family out. We will expel them from ourselves. No merchant may trade with them. No land remain to them. No roof shelter them. No baker bake for them. No woman marry them. Until they renounce, they can't. These were the worst years of Muhammad's life. For three years, they suffered the hunger, thirst, cruelty of the open desert. But the year of grief was still to come when Khadija, Muhammad's wife for 24 years, died. When Abu Talib, his old protector, died. With his last breath, Abu Talib tried again to reconcile Mecca and Mohammed. He never asked more from you than one word, one, one God. If it were only a question of one word, we would have given him ten words. But the word he wants would dethrone all the gods. You were afraid even to hear him. With the death of his uncle, Muhammad had now lost all protection. He was no longer safe in Mecca. Alone with Zaid, his adopted son, he went to the hillside town of Taif. He asked to be taken in, to be allowed to preach. But the children of Taif were turned loose to stone him back into the desert. Mohammed called this the bitterest day of his life. Then, miraculously, when Mohammed's mission seemed to have failed, his entire situation changed. A deputation from the rich but self-destroying city of Medina met him by night at the rocks of Aqaba, asking him to come to them, to stand between their factions, to mediate their continual quarrels and civil wars. Muhammad agreed, provided they gave him a pledge that they worship the one God only. Wait. When we take this pledge, we expel ourselves from the rest of Arabia. So wait. War is in this pledge. We are to make enemies of brothers. We are to make firewood of our gods. That is the meaning of the pledge. If we take it, there can be no turning back. For Muhammad is indeed the messenger of God, foretold to us by the Jews in our city. So if anyone has doubt in this pledge, 
Go now. But if you have no doubts, then you do as I do. I pledge myself to the one and only God, and to you, Mohammed, the messenger of God. He is of us, and we are of him. Let him bring his followers, our brothers, to us, to Medina. This was a journey that changed the world. The Hejira, or flight to Medina. Only 70 people split up into small groups walking 250 miles of desert. Yet so profound were the consequences, so lasting were the effects of this walk, that from it the Muslims date their calendar. In this moment, Islam found its future. Mohammed himself stayed in Mecca, in the greatest danger, until all his followers had left safely. a nation. He has received a city, entered into pledges and treaties, and you, Salul, who claimed to be king of Medina, lost the kingdom last night while you were in bed. You should worry about yourself, Busofian. Every time you trade a whiff of perfume up to Syria, you must creep past that man in Medina. He is across your mercantile throat, so to speak. And what do you intend to do? I intend to wait. And how long will you wait? Till you and the rest of Arabia remove him. To save your way of life. And while you wait? I shall accept his call, of course. Does he think I will give him my birthright? <laughs> I will not. Medina is worth a conversion. Hypocrisy. <laughs> Call it a healthy hypocrisy. King Salul, wiping his face on the floor five times a day, praying. I don't believe it. He may not have to. We'll do now what we should have done before. Kill Mohammed. Come. Come and see. They say that practice leads to perfection. Seven young men, each from a different family. My own son, Ikrima, is with them. They will stab him together. If the responsibility for his death is shared, where lies the guilt? My idea. I'm not sure I'm part of it. Muhammad's body contains too much. His mind, his words. But it is an ingenious solution. And a final one. Thank you. 
Ali, his cousin, lay there to die for him? Who are we fighting? He cannot go far. All the tracks are watched. He must take to the desert. Mecca will give 100 camels to the man who brings back Muhammad or his head. Look for three of them. Muhammad, Abu Bakr, and Norakat as Bedouin guide. What is it? They're not grazing camels. They've eaten dates. They're from the city. Why are you here? Medina is to the north. They make the tracks. Not I. Nomads? Traveling west? I know my art. They say that you can track a bird by smelling the air. We go with them. He may be in that cave over there. Mohammed, if you come out, we'll take you to Mecca alive. This web is unbroken. And these pigeons, they would not build. We were wrong to follow them. We should have gone north. Let's move then. We still have time to head them off. Threads of a spider's web were all that was then between Mohammed and murder. But he was a man not to be killed. The Bedouin guide led him and his companion, Abu Bekr, in their escape through untracked spaces of the desert and the heat of the June days. At Medina, his followers waited with their welcome ready but in great fear for his journey. Anything? Nothing. He himself says he's only a man. No man can survive that heat.
Run and hide. I may be obliged to free you as a gesture. Medina the Blessed, your city, messenger of God. You will stay with me, messenger of God. I have the best house in Medina. You will give me the honor of keeping you. Stay with me! Please, please, please! How can the prophet choose between so many welcomes? Where God guides his camel to stop, there he will build his house. All agreed. We turn Kazwa, his camel, loose. And where Kazwa sits, the prophet stays. I don't Clever man. Choice made by a camel can offend no one. Here we will build the house of the prophet. And our first meeting place, a prayer house. The first mosque of Islam, here. Sit down. We'll do it. Look, 
He went for more. Work is a worship, he says. He's 53 years old. How old are you? There's something missing. Maybe a bell to call the people in. The Christians use a bell? Hmm. What about a horn? Like the Jews? A drum. There's too much blood in a drum. Why not the human voice? As in Omar ibn Khattab's vision. If the Prophet agrees. He means you, Bilal. Me? You have a good voice. Use it. Climb up there. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Brothers, today a man of Medina will embrace a man of Mecca. Each will share half and half. Reach out. Embrace your neighbor in brotherhood. I'm tired of the politics of kissing slaves. Read this. Prophets should concern themselves with the afterworld.
How is my son? Praying like a horse. Does it burn your hands? If it's not torn up, it will burn down the house. He's making laws like a king. He has declared that loyalty to Islam is more than loyalty to tribe or family. What? All Muslims are next of kin to one another? Don't be misled by that. He must change the nature of the tribes before that. The danger is here. Equality. A man's neighbor is as good as himself. The lunatic means it! Jews and Christians have equal rights with Muslims. The Jews who attach themselves to our commonwealth shall be protected. <laughs> Women have rights of inheritance. Rights? Next, he'll be giving the camel rights. He has. The lunatic has. You can't overload them. He's remaking a city. My city. Damn him. He's taken our sons from us. Uh, our future from us. His rights. And our wrongs. No more. This time, it will not be just as riffraff. We will take everything of value they have left in Mecca. Their rugs, their houses, their silver. And with it, enlarge our caravan to Damascus. <laughs> Listen to me. I have news from Mecca. Everything you have left behind is gone. The thieves. Abu Bakr's shops, the Prophet's house, sold. Every cup or piece of cloth, every rag or bone you ever owned is thrown on the market. You are a people of nothing. Don't you even fight for what you own? Who talks of fight? What other way is there, Hamza? When the Prophet says fight, we fight. Now he says peace. Exactly. You're a peace-loving people. Up to your necks in forbearance. Go back to work. We have to defend ourselves. You are the messenger of God. Yet they mock, abuse, and plunder us, and we do nothing. In the baggage of war, we are pathetic. But they are led by greed. We are led by God and you. Now, I, I know how you hate the sword. But we have to fight them. They have stolen our property. We are taking it to Damascus, right past our own door. I say, by God, get it back! I am carried away. It's the pounding in my head. Please. Fight them.
But look at the sun. It's not the time for prayer. It is newly revealed by God to his messenger. Fight, but fight in the way of God against those who fight against you. Drive them out of the places where they drove you out, for persecution is worse than slaughter. Fight them until persecution is no more and religion is for God. But if they stop, let there be no more war. For God never loves the starter of wars. So fight in the way of God against those who fight against you. God is great! God is great! God is great! God is great! These are the disciplines the Prophet puts upon you. You may not harm a woman, a child, or any old person. You may not harm cripples. You may not harm the man that works in the field. You may not cut down trees. Strike only at those who have expelled you who have stolen your rights and enriched themselves with your possessions. Now, to the wells of Bedam. Medina to attack the great caravan. How many men? Three hundred. Two horses. We'll mount a hundred horses. How many camels? Seventy. We'll bring a hundred and seventy. And load twenty of my camels with wine. We'll make a feast of it. This is a war I'd like to fight. A war we cannot lose. <laughs> Sofian's caravan. Tell him to turn towards Bedar. We will join our forces tomorrow at the wells of Bedar.
Well, the better. Yeah. How much march? Here. My charge of the caravan. Here. One day's march. Meet them at the wells. I don't like it. There's too much of Mecca in my caravan to be risked. Put out the fires! Load the camels! We are turning west, away from the wells. Away? You can't. You must meet them at better. We can drink them down like raw eggs. If I run all night, I'll be out of Mohammed's reach by morning. Where's your honor, Bu Sophian? Honor? My honor is on the backs of my camels. Yes, I run. has occupied the wells. He has moved directly into our line of march. <laughs> He's mad. The Sofian's broken camp. He's moving west, away from Bedr. The caravan is safe. So there is no need to fight. Not fight? If we fight, we will start blood feuds between brothers. Between father and son, you mean? Hodaifa, oh, your own son, is with them. He should have been whipped. Mecca is greater than your family. Walid, your second son, he is your true blood. I say fight. We stand in the present. Let the future look after itself. Otbar is not a coward. We finish them tomorrow. We fight! We fight! We fight!
Are you finished? the world. Now if we want water, we'll have to fight for theirs. Good. We fight. Brothers, we hold the wells. We stand in the name of God and his messenger. We wait. Champions! Who are you? We expect our peers and our equals. Come back. My brother, Shaiba! My son, Walid! And myself! Not you. Ubaida and I, and Ali.
Are we your equals? There is only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Grouping!
The Prophet has seen you. You're not to rope or drag the prisoners. They have roped us. Cut them loose. I said cut them loose. And give them water. And share your food. Equal mouthfuls. And if they walk, walk beside them. Any prisoner who can teach ten Muslims to read will go free. Because they blame me hidden, for whatever reason, good or bad. I should have joined them and drowned at the wells of Bedr with them. But I saved the caravan and our future with it. Why sing at me? Why sing my father's name, my brother's name at me? Do you think I need you to remind me? Muhammad, Ali, Hamza! With my nails, Hamza, I'll give you measure for measure. With my nails. Killer. Cutthroat. Butcher. Murdering beast. You slaughtered my father. Hamza. I will hunt the lion hunt. Will make Hamza my running lion, my prey. And when you are dead, Hamza, I will cut your heart out, taste your blood, cut you to pieces. It's it. Forbid this wailing. It cannot go on. What we should do, we will do. We will call in our allies, raise a new army against them. This time. We will prepare it and plan it. Hamza. Is it a plague? What kind of an upside down town have we come into? You could fill your pockets very nicely here. No merchant is minding his shop. God is minding the shop. Where do you come from? Yemen. Did you stop in Mecca? It is on the road. You didn't answer my question. Did you stop in Mecca? Long enough to rest my camels. 
Camelthra is better in Mecca than anywhere in the world. Yes. What is the word on the desert? Oh. It is bad for you. They are gathering. Every young man with a sword is on his way to Mecca. Our strength is here. Do not underestimate them. They are summoning up their courage. In Mecca, there is music in every house. Watch him. will free you, give you your weight in silver and your height in silk for one throw like this. So they have come at last. You know how many soon enough. It's a big army. Three thousand men, hundreds of horses. We beat them at Beda. That was a year ago. They have come to revenge, Beda. Go home and get your swords.
There, Hamza. Can you see him? Here's your fortune. What that? Those horsemen on the flank, out there. They're oddly placed. They are under Khalid. Khalid? I've often thought of that young man. Hamza! Yes? The Prophet asks if you have noticed those horsemen. Yes, I have. I don't like them. He's sending out 50 archers to watch them. No matter what happens, the archers must hold off those horsemen. Said, tell the Prophet we're ready. What do you think, Hamza? Well, they outnumber us. So I'd say it's a fair fight. We see them, and they see us. What faces me has never frightened me. Glory be to Hubbard! gives a word, we will go to them.
This is our moment of victory. They're running away from us. Let's get the loot! Stand where you were told to stand! Come back to your positions! All of you, come back! It's a road. Our center is gone. We've lost the battle, Khalid. Not yet. We were beaten. Our victory is yours, Khalid. We have no victory until we have finished Mohammed. He is up on those rocks. We have finished our business. We have avenged better. But we can end him and Islam forever. Some of his fanatics are still with him. They have the advantage of the mountain. The risk is too high. Mohammed! Listen! A day for a day! The day of Uhud! For the day of weather! Our dead have answered to your dead! Our dead are in paradise! Your dead are in hellfire! Hamza? Hamza? 
You hear me, Hamza? Do you know that I'm with you? I and Do you remember anything, Hamza? How you killed my father and my brother? Now you two are dead. My heart is light. Do you hear, Hamza? Light? But I haven't finished with you. Death is too small. Wash him. Cut him open. Cut him. Lost a battle. So what do they do? They come home and dig the ground harder. They're mad. I agree with you. They defy reason. They are even happy they lost. God sent their defeat, they say, to try them in their faith. Oh, yes. They're fighting for the sky. They'll get what they want. They want Mecca. They'll get Mecca. When we see the stars at noon? Oh, don't underestimate them. I've learned that to my cost. My friend, Mecca is more than their home. It's where God spoke to man. Mecca is like a, a homesickness of the soul to the... This year, they're going as pilgrims. What? Unarmed. Unarmed? Bo Safian will slaughter them in the desert. If you believe in God as they do, it might be possible not to get slaughtered. <laughs> but I agree with you. They probably will be. Let them provoke you, that is what they want! Stand firm!
peace be to you. It says, all who love God must renew their oath to him under the tree. send someone else. It's Suhail. That means we might come to an agreement. Mohammed, you have been given conditions of truce between yourself and Mecca. Have you agreed to them yet? What is this? In the name of God the most gracious. Who is this new God they call gracious? I do not know him. Strike him out. No, and I cannot agree with this. Mohammed, the messenger of God? If I had thought you were the messenger of God, I would not have fought you. Make it uh, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, agrees with Suhail, the son of Amr. That is more factual. Well, so I understand. Good, that is better. Now, it is agreed that you do not continue your pilgrimage. You must turn round and go home. Mecca is home. However, you may continue your pilgrimage next year. And for three days only. In and out. We also agree to the truce. For ten years. During that time, you will not attack any tribe, nor ambush any caravan, or any individual associated with us, no. and vice versa. If you injure any one of us, the truce ends, and vice versa. Is that clear? Ten years. 
Ten years of peace. We need that time. We will use that time. These letters from Mohammed, messenger of God, to the rulers of the world, call the world to Islam, to Heraclius, emperor of Byzantium, Kisra, emperor of Persia, Mukaukas, patriarch of Alexandria. God go with you. <laughs> different races in Islam. An Arab is not superior to a foreigner, nor a white man superior to a black. All return equally to God. Unless you desire for your neighbor what you desire for yourself, you don't have faith. A man who goes to bed with his belly full while his neighbor is hungry, he isn't a Muslim. The ink of a scholar is holier than the blood of a martyr. A man reading is handsome in the sight of God. So learn to read. And when you have learned, teach. The people of the book, the Jews with their Bible, the Christians with their Testament, must be respected by you. For their books likewise came from God. You must not think of Muhammad as more than a man. He was collecting firewood one day. Let me do it, I said. Why, he said. You are the prophet of God. You can't go round scratching for firewood. But he looked at me, mumbling. God does not like the man who considers himself above other men, he said. So I lay back and watched him. Suddenly he stopped. He stood to his full height and came to me. Yes, I am the prophet of God, he said. But even I do not know what will become of me. Have you come to take me again? No. I have come to ask you to take me. I witness that there is only one God, and that Muhammad is his messenger. May God forgive me the times I have fought against you. Islam does away with all that went before it. I'm sorry, I came in here wearing 
Here are my jewels. What they are worth, I give to the poor. And may I offer you my... Yes. But you were the bitterest sword against Islam. Now, by the will of God, I will be the raised sword of God. It's all easy to God. Just as he makes dying living, he can make losing winning. Two years ago, we thought we were beaten when we had to sign that truce. Look at us now, charging from victory to victory in the hearts of men. What's that? Am I insulted like this? I am Bouchofian. I expect some courtesy. We are not at war, we have a truce. I have come to speak to Mohammed. Where is he? He's in the mosque. We did not break the truce. I have come to reaffirm the truce. I speak for Mecca. Muhammad, why do you turn from me? Don't go. Muhammad, don't go! Bandits broke the truce! Not off! The night was dark! I am here to testify the night was dark! Farah, this is your city! And I, you are my kin, intercede for me! I must be heard! I am Mecca! I am the leader of Mecca! Why am I insulted like this? Because you keep no promise and respect no pledge. I have heard what I never thought I'd hear. Busafian asking for pity. To be outfought. Outthought. Outmaneuvered by a one-time shepherd. You saw that shepherd's religion grow from a speck. That speck was in my eye. I could see nothing. Tell Mecca the gods are dead. It is useless to resist God. Travel fast, for every man here will be close behind you. It's you who have broken the truce.
for tonight will be 10,000. Men from every tribe. We'll close the streets and defend from the houses. It's no use. There are thousands of them. Every hour they are joined by more. You coward! Hind, go home! You coward! Are you the leader of Mecca? Look at yourself. You were broke. They swallowed you and spat you back. Did my father and brother die for my husband to run away? You go home! You! We cannot resist! Mecca is taken. No. 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 We are to camp here for the night. I can see Mecca. Even through the mountains. Fires. You cannot count them. It's very beautiful. When we drove them out of Mecca, I did not know they carried Mecca with them. We can smell the bread they are baking. Yes. It means they don't intend to plunder. At least I hope that's what it means. They don't want blood on their own walls and doorsteps. I can bargain with that. Take me to him. So you're giving us the city? You offer me no bread. I understand. You may decide to kill me. Say what you've come to say. I saw your fires. The men around them. And I know what power you put into your men. We can no longer resist, Muhammad. Now, if you'll agree. You dare to come here and ask for conditions? Isn't it time yet for you to recognize who Muhammad is? Muhammad, there is still doubt in my heart. If we were to cut off your head, it would remove all your doubts. Khalid, there's no compulsion in religion. A man may take many years or only need minutes. It's God who decides the time. So respect his doubts. Black slave. You are the best school. I'm only what God has given me. Yes. But the gods that I worshipped 
been of any use. It would have helped me. I declare, under no compulsion, there is one God. And you are the messenger of God. Now let me go. They're coming! Hold your head. They're coming in from three sides! Nothing plundered, nothing seized, no one abused. All behind closed doors are safe. All in Bu Sophia's house are safe. All by the cover are safe. At least he kept his word. They haven't forced the door. 
He storms hearts, not wars. It's a permanent victory. I dread going out. We must. We must appear in. Were we so wrong? The way we lived, yes. That was wrong. We were trapped in our own faults. Our gods were less than us. Now there he is, making his entrance to the Kaaba. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. God gave this house to Abraham to be a sacred place. Worship no other gods but him and cleanse his house. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله. So it was. 
Muhammad took no revenge and allowed none. He declared Mecca a holy place. No one may shed blood or cut down a tree or kill a living thing in Mecca. Soon all Arabia was converted, not only to the new worship, but to the new laws, manners, attitudes contained in Islam. The Prophet had lived to see his work done, but now he began to feel the nearness of death. One great act of his prophethood remained, the setting of its seal. He called the people to him, and he spoke for the last time his message of surrender to God and humanity to man. O oh, mankind, listen well. I may not be with you much longer. The weak among you, feed them on what you eat, dress them as you are dressed. You will meet your God, and he will call you to account for your actions. Let those who are present warn those who are absent. You are all descended from Adam, and the best among you is he who most regards God. Think deeply about what I say. Let all your feuds be abolished. You must know that every Muslim is the brother of every other Muslim, and all Muslims are brothers one of another. Between Muslims there are no races and no tribes. Nor must you take anything from your brother except what is given freely. Do not oppress, and do not be oppressed. O oh, my people, I am but a man. It may be that the angel of death will visit me soon, and death will overtake me. But I have left you a book revealed by God, the Koran, which is light and guidance. Now he repeated to the people the final revelation of the Koran, the seal and termination. Not Muhammad's words, but God's word. This day I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor to you and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. On June the 8th, 632, in his 63rd year, Muhammad died. Many of his followers could not believe the fact. How can such a man die? But Abu Bakr, the prophet's friend, stood up in the mosque. If anyone worships Muhammad, let him know that Muhammad is dead. But he who worships God, let him know that God is alive and cannot die. They buried Muhammad beside his mosque in Medina. But the religion he preached found its place in the heart of man. It endured. It multiplied. Still to Mecca they come, mankind. The people of Islam dressed in their pilgrim white. All equal before God, all united in this place of prayer. Each individual soul joined in a community of worship. One God. Yeah, I don't... 